All right, welcome back to the channel. So we knew we would be talking about this sooner or later. And just in case you thought I was going to drop the subject, nope. Nope. American take on, the American takeover of boxing by Matchroom USA and DAZN is just about dead. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. So, you know, we like to cover subjects from the beginning to the end around these parts. Not too long ago, I do believe it's pushing up on two years now, we heard that The Zone had a billion dollars and they were going to come over and take over American boxing. They were going to sign the PBC fighters away from the PBC because the PBC, you know, doesn't have exclusive con um, promotional agreements with people. They have managerial and advisory agreements. So Eddie Hearn and DeZone figured that because they had the biggest star in boxing, you remember him, Anthony Joshua? They had him, the biggest star in boxing, that they and they had a ton of cash from a British... Uh, uh, I think it's a Russian billionaire who lives in the U in the UK. They were going to come over, snatch up all those fighters and provide boxing matches to us without pay-per-view, right? Without pay-per-view for less money. It was to be $10 a month and we were going to get pay-per-view level fights and it was going to change the way boxing behaved and it was going to be an American, Eddie Hearn specifically was coming over to take over American boxing and put these guys out of business. Um, a Black Fight Fan TV, if you're not familiar with the channel, definitely subscribe to Black Fight Fan TV of Trail Boxing Talkers on that channel, would say that Eddie Hearn is going to get sent back to the UK with shoestrings holding up his pants. Well, it appears as if DAZN might be getting sent back to wherever they came from with shoestrings holding up their pants because it has been announced by the zone that they are looking to do one of two things. They are looking at for more investors to give them money so that they can stay afloat or they're looking for somebody to buy them outright so they can get out of the business. The owner can get out of the business and they can pass this architect, this infrastructure, this IT application and the associated infrastructure on to somebody else who can then make it successful. So in short, the zone looks like they, if they're not waving the white flag, they have it sitting. They are currently tying it to the post and saying, somebody come save me. Now, why do they need to be saved? Before we get into that, I got to say thank you to everybody that came to the channel and watching this video. Thank you guys so much for your support. And thank you for sometimes I put out videos that you might not always like what I say. And it comes from a point, you know, a point of view that might be a little, you know, a little controversial. But it is what I what it is. If I think something's funny or I got a, pu a viewpoint, I'm going to share it with you. Hey, man, we won't agree with one, but maybe we'll skip on and, you know, and agree on the next. Just how it works. Just what this how it works when you when you chopping up about boxing. Sometimes you like one guy likes a fighter. The other guy likes a fighter. One of your fighters got to lose. You bicker back and forth about it. But that's it. So anyway, I say that because of some other videos that I've done the last couple of days. I wanted to slip that in there to people that watch this. But back to the zone. Why do I say the zone is um, waving the right white flag? Because this coronavirus hit and now they have because they are and we I said this before right that because all they have is boxing that is of any interest to the in the United States and because they're not bundled with another package where you can still get something for your money people will get rid of it as soon as they as soon as it um there's not a fight that they're interested in, right? They're just going to get they're just going to get rid of it and there's no real reason for them to keep it. It couldn't possibly appeal to a, a broad audience in the United States. It was pretty much designed 
a billion dollars invested in really trying to to get the attention of hardcore boxing fans. Because if you have a siloed application, right, a standalone application, right, completely unconnected to any other sports that you want to fight, see, or any other apps that you might have, it's going to have to, it's the first option to go when money gets tight. Compare that to ESPN, ESPN or ESPN Plus. ESPN Plus is not going to lose a lot of subscribers because ESPN Plus is wrapped up with Disney Plus. So since you already have kids, a lot of people have, first of all, a lot of people have kids that want to watch Disney Plus. They have ESPN, ENPS, ESPN Plus and probably never watch it but they still pay for it because it is bundled in with the other applications. That's not the case with DAZN. DAZN is just DAZN, right? Now, DAZN was bundled in with, it was DAZN was bundled in with Showtime, with HBO, right? If you know, if you had HBO, you also had, um, I don't know, the, you know, the Animal Planet, <laughs> something like that. If you knew that you were paying for those, well, I love the Animal Planet and I love, uh, you know, HBO. Hey, I'm willing to, and if I gotta pay for ESPN to ESPN Plus to keep or the zone to keep it, hey, well, so be it. I just I've got some crap that I don't want to watch. Similar to like all of the other channels that you have on your cable network, they got 300, 500, 600 channels. I promise you, you're not watching but maybe six of them, right? Six of the 300 or so channels you might actually watch on a regular basis. HBO, your local news, ESPN, you know, maybe Fox when something comes on Fox. But other than that, you ain't watching all that other stuff, but you keep it because it's all bundled together. So now that DAZN is a goner, now we knew DAZN was gonna be a goner when it showed up, okay? When it showed up doing business like that, first of all, they screwed up thinking that just because they threw more money at these fighters that were signed by the PBC, that would make them immediately leave them. Now, it did with some people, right? Because that's some, how some people are built, right? Danny Garth, Daniel Jacobs, that's how he's built. If you give Danny Jacobs, you say, hey, you Daniel Jacobs, you're with somebody that has been treating you really well. You've been getting big paydays. You know, your trainers, you know, you went through cancer. They helped you with your cancer stuff. When you got done and you were over your cancer stuff, thank God, you know, you they had a spot back for you to come back and fight. You know, the trainer was with you the whole time visiting in the hospital, right? All of that. But when Eddie Hearn offers them two, two quarters more, hey, got to go. You know, gotta go. Nice to know. It's a business decision. And then when he finally gets the big payday, right? He cuts a check for Daniel. He cuts a check. Well, I think he got like supposed to have gotten ten million dollars, right? And the so ten percent of the money of the purse is supposed to go to Andre Rozier, who's his trainer, right? The guy that's been training him since he turned professional and all of that stuff. And what does Daniel Jacobs do? Daniel Jacobs writes him a check. For a hundred thousand dollars, it says, "Nah, that's all I'm giving you. Sorry, I'm giving you the same money. I would get. I'm giving you the same money that you always got for this ten million dollar fight. Because that's how he's built. Some people are just built like that. Uh, Demetrius Andre, dude's just built like that, right? I already had a fight sitting there waiting for him with Showtime, an offer from Showtime to sign with Showtime, a fight with Jermel Charlo for the for to you know for you know for his belt." All that set up, as soon as somebody offers them two quarters more, right, and, and an opportunity to get slick, there goes Demetrius Andre, boop, over to Rock Nation. But some people are not built like that. Like, Adrian Bronner is not built like that. Errol Smith Jr. is not built like that. Deontay Wilder is not built like that. A lot of these guys consider themselves to be loyal to Eddie Hearn, I mean, loyal to Al Heyman and loyal to the idea that they can be their own bosses and not want other promoters to tell them what to do. They bought into it. And as a result, they didn't go there. And the zone was never able to really build that type that, you know, the ground. Uh, they were never able to build that initial ground cell swell, which led them to making absolutely ridiculous. Instead of being able to spend that money on small, a bunch of fights and a bunch of fighters that could be high level fighters. When that didn't work, right? They went after the wrong guy's stable. What did they have to do? They got, they had to try to sign the ex HBO people and then give them ridiculous amounts of money 
pretty much pay-per-view level money to fight nobody's on their network, which turned people's off of the of the zone. There's this, there's been maybe three, three in two years, maybe three, what I would consider to be pay-per-view level fights and only really, yeah, three of them that I would consider to be pay-per-view level fights. That being the two Anthony Joshua fights, the two Anthony Joshua fights with um, actually only the second Anthony Joshua fight with Andy Ruiz. And then maybe Kovalev versus maybe Kovalev versus Canelo. But the rest of those things, none of those things were pay-per-view worthy. And you're paying. And for those three fights, right, if you had been paying your what? Oh, and the price goes up. Right. So it's sort of a lot of people now it's twenty, twenty five dollars a month. <laughs> like, Who's going to pay that? Who's going to pay twenty five dollars a month? Ten, that's that's. Two hundred and fifty, that's two hundred and fifty. Um, three hundred dollars. That's three hundred dollars. That's three, almost four whole pay-per-views for two. That's double the price of your pay-per-view. It was going to fail and it has failed. And we told you it was going to fail. And it's only a matter of time till they shut that down. Eddie Hearn is saying, oh, we got to lose. You know, the problem is, you know, I'm part of the problem. The zone is part of the problem. But we're just paying these fighters way too much money. Yeah, exactly. You are paying those fighters way too much money for a network that doesn't have anybody to watch it. You should have just let boxing just stop trying to reinvent the wheel, dude. <laughs> You should. And then Eddie Hearn, of course. Right. Eddie Hearn, who had Anthony Joshua brought up on Showtime, brought up on brought up on PBC cards right through Showtime, because that's who Showtime was dealing with. He skips over to the zone. Right. And if he would and if he would have been able to get his druthers, he would have skipped out on he man, he skipped out on the UK, too. <laughs> Anyway, that's just how these dudes are built. I just wanted to chop it up about that real quick. Anyway, we'll see what happens with the zone. I'm positive they're going to go out of business, though. They're going to go out of business or they're going to get and they're going to get sold to somebody that is not as inclined to throw money down the trash can at boxers uh, on fights between Canelo Alvarez and Rocky Fielding. Anyway, that's my take on it. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.